Welcome back. We are joined by Patrick Davey from WorkSafe BC, and we're talking about working alone and how to do so safely. So thanks for being here, Patrick. Thanks for having me. Of course. Uh, what do you mean when, when you say working alone? I mean, what does that really entail? Well, when we talk about uh, the safety of it, working alone or in isolation is really working in conditions where uh, assistance isn't readily available in right. case of emergencies or, or when you're when you're hurt mm -hmm. um, and really you have to think about it there's three questions you have to ask to really think to know if you are working alone is there other people around and even if yes you have to ask your question yourself a question is are they aware that you might need assistance right and are they willing and able to assist you and a lot of times if there's answers no to any of them then you are working alone okay um, what types of jobs would you say are the most you know carry the the highest number of employees that would be working alone and um, especially this time of year when we have cold that is yeah. more hazards and it, it there's a whole gamut there's a whole range and there could be uh, loggers in, in in Blue River or right ranchers in Merritt. Mm -hmm. It could be uh, truck drivers or delivery. We're talking about uh, late night stores, uh, um, gas stations, convenience stores, and even healthcare workers that are going into other people's homes. Yeah. They're working on and which means that they're vulnerable because nobody's going to be around to help them if they need assistance. So why is it so important to take these precautions? And I mean, who who should be doing that? The employer, the employee, a mixture of both? So the employer really, you know, when it comes to health and safety of the workplace, it's the employer's responsibility. And that's just one of the hazards. Mm -hmm. Do you have people working alone? If you do, do a risk assessment. Look at your look at where you work. What are the hazards there mm -hmm. that are most likely to affect those people working alone? Some examples of that could be is there a cluttered storage area that somebody has to go and work in? And again, this is when they're working alone. Or do they have to do a, like a cash deposit right. at night? Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of things where people may be at risk and they're working by themselves. Yeah, um, and then after I guess uh, the the hazards or the prob potential problems are, are laid out, is there anything else employers can do? Well, um, I guess the, you have to prioritize. Look at them. Are there, there's things that you need to and can do right away. Yeah. Prioritize them and look at the things that you can eliminate hazards. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can't eliminate them, looking at look at engineering or administrative controls. For for working alone, administ uh, engineering controls could be like um, emergency lighting, better lighting, right. um, video cameras. Administrative could be change when you're taking out the garbage in the back or the cash in the daytime, or have a second worker. So when it's important that when you do that is to make up really clear mm -hmm. written procedures for the checking of the well-being of your workers. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, putting it in writing, does that make a huge difference? Is that something that WorkSafe really recommends? Absolutely, because then it's, it's formalized and it's consistent. Whether the boss is away this week or next week, everybody's going to follow the same patterns. And then there's a couple of things that you may want to think about mm -hmm. um, in that. Having a, a, a person check system is you want to make sure that there is somebody that's that's going to be phoning that person contact them right. on a regular intervals and you need to set what those intervals should be i think i told you before i was a follower in the forest industry mm -hmm. for a long time a lot more hazardous so you look at 20 to 30 minutes other things intervals may be a few hours um right. that's what your hazard assessment is going to be it may be start and end of of um, the session Checking at the well for the well-being of the worker at the end of the shift is critical. Yeah. And finally, having a system in place if you can't if you can't get a hold of them, what are you going to do next? Right. That's important. Making it very clear and making it available. I like that last point about making sure you get a hold of the employer, make sure they got through their shift, things went well, you know, and really checking in with them. And we have one at WorkSafe, and that's we I have. A lot of officers that work for me, and, and uh, if something happens, they don't check in. We have a whole system in place to follow yeah, up. You're going to track them down. Because <laughs> I'm concerned, and most employers are very concerned about yeah. their workers. Of course. Is there, uh, just quickly before we were running out of time here, Patrick, but I know that lots of employers, you know, they can only have one employee working at the time, you know, whether it be just because of the job or money. Uh, yep. You know, it's expensive to have uh, several employers, but would is it better to have more than one i mean is that sort of the well and, and that's great can? it's it's great but financially is that practicable right so it depends and so if it isn't um again you talk look at cowboys out on the range yeah. they're by themselves oh, a lot of the cowboys what they have is they have a program they'll have a spot device mm -hmm. where they can be located if something happens um but it's it's being prepared one of the things it's it's 
a lot of the stuff is very easy. Yeah. I think I've shown you some of our publications before. Yep. This one's called Working Alone, especially with small business. It lays out risk assessments, uh, work procedures, everything you'd need to make it work for you. Wonderful. And really the cost of doing, in, in terms of health and safety, the cost of doing little or nothing is too high. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful advice. Thank you so much, Patrick. Really appreciate that. WorkSafeBC.com for more information. We are back after a break with your weather forecast. Stay with us.